Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your Conservative Member of Parliament for your communist rejecting riding of Ren for Nipissing Pembroke. This week, the Minister for Laurentian Elite Heritage announced he was rejecting several amendments to C-11, the Online Streaming Censorship Act, which passed the Senate. The First Amendment he rejected was to design what well, was designed to ensure user-generated content was excluded from regulation. The Second Amendment required age verification for websites with sexually explicit material. The Third Amendment the Liberals rejected, which was, would have banned the CBC from using sponsored content. Sponsored content is advertising designed to look like news. By rejecting the First Amendment and including user-generated content, the Liberals have made it absolutely clear their goal is to control what you can say, see, and hear online. There is no other explanation. Even the minister can't explain it other than to claim it creates a loophole. But that was the point of the amendment, to exclude user-generated content. That's content created by Canadians using social media services. They include podcasts, YouTube videos, even TikTok videos. The Senate amendment was designed to create a loophole which would allow user-generated content to pass through the regulatory wall. Ever since the minister introduced this bill, he's repeatedly demonstrated he doesn't understand his own bill. The thing is, he doesn't need to understand it. That's not the job Trudeau gave him. Trudeau's instructions were to follow the bidding of the powerful CanCon lobby. It was Pierre Trudeau who first changed the Broadcast Act to expand the law from regulating public airwaves to regulating content. Papa Trudeau's mandated Canadian broadcasters had to produce content owned by Canadians. This cultural mandate created a group of television, film, and music companies who lived off subsidies. Making movies and TV shows people want to watch is hard. The, this Canadian content, or CanCom for short, got to skip the hard work and took the handout. After 50 years of living off the subsidies, they've become dependent on handouts. And the powerful CanCon lobby said they oppose the amendment, so the minister said he opposes the amendment. The CanCon lobby doesn't want competition from independent digital creators. It doesn't matter if this is a funda fundamental violation of Canadians' charter rights. The powerful CanCon lobbyists want to keep lining their pockets with your money. C-11 has always been about corporate welfare for the telecom companies and subsidies for the groups privileged by the Laurentian elite. That's why the Liberals are rejecting the First Amendment. The Second Amendment the Liberals are rejecting would require websites and streaming services with ex sexually explicit material to have an age verification system. Now, the last time I mentioned sex, children, and the Liberal Party, the legacy media ran headlines accusing me of being a racist. I'm not going to speculate why the Trudeau Liberals would reject an amendment designed to prevent children from being exposed to pornography. I think you and I both know why. Let me know if you can think of any legitimate reason why it should stay in the, in the comments below. Finally, there is the amendment to block the CBC from running sponsored content. It's obvious why the Liberals rejected the other two amendments. Sponsored content is when a media company runs an advertisement dressed up to look like a news story. It's usually fake news. The argument against sponsored content is that it undermines the integrity and objectivity of the media. 
frankly, for most conservatives, the CBC is almost no integrity already. If the CBC wants to torch what's left of its reputation with its small, urban, progressive audience, it'll amplify calls for a conservative government to defund the CBC. The only explanation is that both the government of Canada and the Liberal Party plan to use sponsored content on the CBC. That's right. Your tax dollars will be used to purchase fake news ads on the taxpayer-funded CBC. Our conservative leader, the Honorable Pierre Polyev, will be speaking to the censorship bill at noon today. We'll carry it live on my Facebook page so you don't have to search for the station on TV. Speaking of liberals and fake news, we knew the liberals were faking it when they pulled the amendments banning hunting rifles from Bill C-21. Today, the liberals are holding a technical briefing on those amendments. Governments traditionally hold technical briefings just before introducing legislation. In these meetings, members of parliament, the media, and stakeholders are given access to policy experts who wrote the legislation. But never in all my time has a government ever held a technical briefing on amendments which the government itself had withdrawn. When asked about this, uh, Minister Mendicino was clear. He said he had promised the powerful anti-gun lobby he would ban all scary-looking rifles, and he's determined to fulfill their wishes. Just as with the censorship bill, the Liberals are clear. They do not work for you. They work for the lobbyists. Liberals and their close relationship with lobbyists are also at the heart of the communist infer interference scandal. On Monday, Trudeau announced a, a series of distractions he hopes will prevent Canadians from getting to the truth about what he knew, when he knew it, and why he did not stop. So the NDP are so desperate to avoid an election, they're helping the Liberals with the cover-up. The NDP claim we need a public inquiry into foreign interference. But the issue is not merely foreign interference. It's liberal collusion with the communists. Ever since Trudeau professed his love and admiration of the communists, they've reciprocated in kind. If there was ever any doubt about the liberals colluding with communists, Canada's former ambassador in Beijing, Jean McCallum, was clear. He said, quote, anything that is more negative against Canada will help the conservatives who are much less friendly to China than liberals, end quote. John McCallum was a cabinet minister in both the Chrétien and Martin governments. He was hand-picked by Trudeau to be the ambassador to the communist regime in Beijing. What he said was absolutely true. The Liberal Party is much more friendly towards communists than the Conservative Party. When the communists kidnapped two Canadians, it was Cretchen who argued that Canada should just give in to the communist demands. Canada is an, in an intelligence alliance with the United States, the United Kingdom, New Zealand, and Australia. Each of our intelligence agencies warned against allowing Huawei, a communications technology company controlled by the communist regime in Beijing, to be involved in the fifth generation telecom network. Australia was the first to ban Huawei in 2018, followed by New Zealand. In 2019, the US banned Huawei from its 5G networks. In 2020, the UK banned Huawei. Our government had the same intelligence as our closest allies, yet the ban was only announced 10 months ago. Why did the Liberals delay for nearly five years? I think you know the answer now. This type of foreign interference was exactly 
what well, I introduced a private member's bill in 2015 to create a foreign influence registry, a log that foreign funded lobbyists meeting with government officials had to sign on to. The Liberals, the NDP, and the Bloc all voted against it. And now we know why Trudeau voted against it. The Liberals are afraid of the full truth coming out. Live from Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant. How was that? <laughs>